Now, don't hang too close to me tonight, James. You'll meet more people if you don't monopolize my time. You seem to have damn little of that for me, in public or private. It's for your own good, James. A loyal wife always helps her husband's career. And tonight is the perfect opportunity. Imagine you and me at a party given by Jefferson Davis. Davis is bound to recognize my vision and courage and realize he needs me in the war effort. Flattery, James. All men like flattery. Use whatever charm you can muster. I wish you'd stop treating me like a child. My viewers are my strength. Being a clerk to the first assistant in the treasury, it's not good enough for you, James. I want more of you, much more. For me, or for yourself? Isn't it all one and the same? <laughs> Darling, but I, I must ask Mrs. Davis where she got that simply interesting dress. time of war, our central government must enforce stern measures necessary to our military operation, such as the use of slaves as laborers, regardless of its unpopularity. Then I submit, with all due respect to yourself and to your office, that it must not happen. Only the sovereign states can decide such a policy. If they are forced to surrender that freedom to a central power, why would be no better off than that circus in Washington? May I remind you, sir, that I am charged with making this new nation strong and successful. We must have a central government stronger than its separate parts. No. Otherwise, the states will not tolerate it. If that be so, Mr. Huntu, then the Confederacy will not last out the year. You can have separate, independent states, or you can have a strong new nation, but you cannot have both. A choice must be made. It is my choice not to be party ever to autocratic ways. Furthermore, the Confederacy. Well done, James. Why is our free dog your political philosophy? Because he knows he's wrong. James. Ashton. Oh, Ashton, me, I heard everything. Is that what flattery means to you, James? Picking an argument with the most important man in government. He behaves like a dictator, and I have a strong conviction. Well, to hell with your conviction! You probably ended your political career just now, but that is if you ever really had one. <laughs> simply can't abide punch that's lost its potency. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Huntoon. Good evening, sir. 
I'm afraid you have the advantage. Have we met before? Well, I'm not surprised you don't remember me. The last time I saw you, I was wearing the uniform of a major in the Union Army. In New Orleans, after one of my speeches. Precisely. After which several of us adjourned to Madame Conti's house where we enjoyed the favors yes, of certain ladies. Yes, yes, lady. uh, of course. Uh, you told me that you could not serve the Union, but if Jeff Davis were elected, you could not serve him either. As you can see, I'm still a man of my word. And you, sir, are still a man of vision. Thank you. I appreciate your graciousness. Not at all. I overheard your discussion with that arrogant jackass. You were completely justified in what you said to him. I'm afraid my wife doesn't share your opinion. Well, she certainly is beautiful, which probably means you will have to forgive her. <laughs> Come then. Let me introduce you to her. Well, I'd love to, sir. But business before the pleasure of meeting your wife, if you will. I confess I have a particular reason for wishing to renew your acquaintance. To come to the point, Mr. Huntoon, I am organizing a small group of men, men of vision and stature like yourself, to finance a confidential venture that I guarantee will provide incredible profit. You mean some kind of investment? A maritime investment, sir. You see, I think the Yankee blockade provides a golden opportunity for men of the will and wherewithal. Are you suggesting running the blockade? Yes, I am. I already have an interest in one ship, and I have just located a very fast steamer called the Water Witch. Now, she can be refitted in Liverpool to suit our purposes at a fair price. Your share of the profits will be equal to your share of the investment. The Confederacy will need more arms and ammunition. Sir, I'm referring to luxuries. Luxuries are where the money is. Because the danger to the ship is tremendous. So what we are looking for is the short term, Mr. Hunt, too. Not the long term. But with the right cargo, only two successful runs will bring in a profit of 500%. After that, let the Yankees sink her, if they can. And if not, our potential earnings are astronomical. I must decline, sir. I want no part of such a scheme. May I ask why, sir? I have several reasons, but one is enough. It is unpatriotic. But since when are perfumed silk and good sherry unpatriotic? The answer is no, sir. No what? Your husband and I were disagreeing on a business bench, although we do share the same politics and evidently the same love of beauty. My dear, may I present? El Kena Bent, sir, at your service. Mr. Bent, my wife Ashton. You went to the wrong person, Mr. Bent. My husband would never invest in something like that. Because of his patriotism? <laughs> no, because he's a coward. But I'm not, and I have my own money. Now, how can that be, madam? Your husband is a lawyer. And the law says that your money became his the moment you were married. I control my money, Mr. Ben, because I control my husband. Well, I can't believe that. And I think he was very wrong to refuse you. Does that mean that you would not? Perhaps we should discuss it later, in private. 